the National Aeronautics and Space Administration was founded in 1958, and ever since then it's gone on to make some groundbreaking discoveries. NASA was established to research and develop vehicles and activities for the exploration of space, within and outside of Earth's atmosphere. NASA conducts programs that focus in part on space operations. The US government has the authority to provide technical assistance to the agency or the government in all its operations. However, if NASA's operations and functions are not the subject of substantial statutory oversight by Congress, it may act to prevent or delay actual or constructive activities of the federal government, or by the administrator of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. Various people have been lucky enough to work for this impressive company, some of which have been there during some of history's most incredible discoveries. These finds have put NASA at the forefront when it comes to space exploration, and they have captivated the minds of millions of people from across the world. Although these stories are incredibly impressive, sometimes it's the more mysterious ones that capture people's attention. This is usually because not much information is released, and the general public is left wanting more. One such individual who worked for NASA joined Reddit a few years back, and did an Ask Me Anything. It was submitted to the subreddit five years ago and said the following. I am a retired NASA engineer. I worked for NASA in its infancy beginning in 1954 up until the shuttle program. Ask me anything. My short bio. I was an RCA engineer contracted to work for NASA from 1954 until 1988. I worked in the range safety division for NASA before the Mercury program even began. I was able to witness firsthand the race to space, landing our men on the moon and more. I rubbed shoulders with Von Braun. I've shaken hands with John Glenn, Alan Shepard and more. My grandson is helping me answer questions. End quote. The questions at first were basic. One user asked what was a normal working day like, to which he responded the following. Working day with no launch. My job was to ensure equipment was in good shape for the next launch. Very procedural. Working day with launch, filled with checks and tests done on a very rigid schedule. Everything had to be done at an exact time with certain checking being done and done successfully. They had to be done at the exact right time to fit in with the launch itself. There were times we couldn't test for things if the bird wasn't in configuration for it, so we had very narrow windows to test for things. Otherwise, we'd set off bells and sirens across the area. End quote. The next question that was asked was how was people after a failed mission? Was there a lingering sadness or were people ready to go, determined to have the next one be successful? To which he replied, When there was a loss of life there was a deep sadness by mostly everyone that I knew. The reaction was always what do we do to prevent this from happening again? There was so much testing from everyone to make sure a mistake never happened again. So much investigation and testing. End quote. The conversation then moved onto unidentified flying objects, where someone asked where do they hide the UFOs. He said the following. I did work on the B-29 in Roswell in the Air Force. There was one hangar they said not to go near. End quote. As you can imagine, this then caused people to start talking about the subject saying that although they didn't release much information, it backs up what other workers have said in that there's certain places that are off limits. People in the comment section then went on to talk about Hangar 18, which is widely known by UFO enthusiasts as the location that the government hides the physical evidence of extraterrestrial contact, whether it be the remains of spacecraft debris, extraterrestrial equipment and allegedly even the bodies of aliens, Allegedly, there's a highly guarded top-level clearance inside of the warehouse codenamed the Blue Room. Due to various sources, this location is home to classified information, and this comes from those that have worked there. 
is widely believed that this blue room is the location where the United States government houses captured alien life and conducts experiments on them that often leads to termination. The notoriety of Hangar 18 goes back to the infamous Roswell event. This was where there was a recorded press release issued by the Roswell Army Airfield, stating that the personnel inspected the crash of a flying disc and that they sent it to headquarters for research. Shortly after, there was another press release from the Air Force Base in Fort Worth, Texas, claiming to be the headquarters that the remains were sent to, not Wright-Patterson, and that the remains were only that of a weather balloon. However, throughout the years, the government's repeated use of the excuse of weather balloons and swamp gas became so cliché that much later, in 1994, the Air Force would go on to state this was untrue and that it was in reality testing a surveillance device that was designed to fly over nuclear research sites in the Soviet Union, which was equally backed by a complete lack of evidence. On multiple occasions, the Air Force has denied the rumours and stated there was never a building called Hangar 18. However, satellite imaging has shown that to be only semi-true, as there clearly is a structure named Building 18. However, many refuse to believe the misdirection away from Wright-Patterson, as it has been officially documented as the home of Project Sign, an initiative that was signed into action in July of 1947 and dedicated to studying reported UFO sightings. The project was converted into Project Grunge in 1949 and then into Project Blue Book in March of 1952, which led to the Blue Room Theory. It was officially stated that Project Blue Book was only designed to study crashed Soviet aircrafts. However, Senator Barry Goldwater was recorded asking General Curtis LeMay for access into the base, with which LeMay was quoted saying the following, Not only can't you get into it, but don't you ever mention it to me again. A very suspicious response to a request to see a bunch of shot down Soviet aircrafts. So what do you make of these comments by a retired NASA engineer? And do you think they hid something in this Hangar 18? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below and help us to grow this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.